Where is it written that we can't lead manufacturing in the world? We are not going to sell the most sophisticated American chips to China. Out of the need to maintain its sci-tech hegemony, the U.S. abuses export control measures to maliciously block and suppress Chinese companies. Chinese people will never allow any foreign forces to bully, oppress, or enslave us. The United States is several years behind in chip manufacturing technology, although it was originally invented there. These chips have become the powering engine of our daily lives, as well as our military forces. However, as the US fights its way back to reclaim its chip supremacy, it threatens globalization as we know it, by adopting a state-powered industrial policy, the same policy it has long pressed on China to stop using, rebranding the race for chip supremacy as a standoff between democracy and autocracy, and a trade-off between national security and economic performance, creating a new global order that defines tech rivals and long-time trade partners as enemies. So do you think the US will succeed in this race? Will the US semiconductor sanctions on China backfire? Like what happened with the space program sanctions before? Ending up with China being the only nation with an active space station in orbit? And why the political conflict between China and Taiwan is the Achilles heel in this global race for chip supremacy? Get your cup of coffee as we deep dive together into the key findings of my research trying to answer these questions. I've really enjoyed preparing this content as I started my career as a chip designer. I'll be covering this in several episodes, so I suggest you better subscribe now to keep up. And let's start with the first one. The biggest threat we face as a country from a counterintelligence perspective is from the People's Republic of China. China is still the biggest threat to the United States. That's according to the Pentagon's new national defense strategy out today. China is by far the most consequential strategic competitor for the coming decades and the most serious challenge to U.S. national security. U.S. intelligence leaders say China poses the most consequential threat to the nation's national security. The remarks were part of a Senate Intelligence Committee's annual hearing on worldwide threats. But we're seeing the rise of a country that is unlike something we've seen probably ever before. Uh, and it's one of the great historical pivot points, uh, I think, that we've ever witnessed, which is the rise of China. As we go forward uh, over the next 10, 20, 25 years, there's no question in my mind that the biggest geostrategic challenge to the United States is going to be China. Folks. We need to make these chips right here in America. The Trump administration adopted an America, America first policy and launched first. a trade war against China in 2018, started by increasing tariffs on Chinese products and banning of specific high-tech Chinese companies. Since then, both countries went through a cycle of increasing tariffs on each other. However, it was not until the pandemic that these tensions escalated and revealed a great dependency risk in globalization causing automakers to lose more than $210 billion globally due to chip shortage. And it's all because of a little chip. Unfortunately, we produce 0% of these advanced chips now. And China is trying to move away ahead of us and manufacture these sophisticated chips as well. Well, America invented those chips. We invented them, nobody else. Well, guess what? The supply chain is going to start here and end here in the United States. The U.S. could not tolerate the idea that they would be left behind in a technology that was invented by them. Hence came the Chips and Science Act. And as the next chapter of the ongoing trade war, the chip war began. President Biden just signed a bill into law today boosting domestic semiconductor production. There are some big companies that are set to benefit. The U.S. is spending big on industrial policies to bring manufacturers back to America industrial policy. It is the use of some sort of government power, either legal power or taxing power or tax abating power to have the economy start producing some things that the government thinks it needs to be produced. China has been able to throw literally you know, two, three, four times as much money at trying to build up their semiconductor chip capacity as the United States. This is where the CHIPS Act comes in. The legislation offers $53 billion in direct investment plus a separate tax incentive program to reinvigorate the U.S. chip industry. 
The Semiconductor Industry Association estimates that the act has attracted over $210 billion in private investments across 22 states. And these private investments were promised by top companies that manufacture semiconductor chips like Intel, Micron, Samsung, TSMC, and others, all planning to build semiconductor fabs in the U.S. within the next five years. However, the U.S. government incentives to build these factories do have some constraints. The government subsidies come with strings attached. Companies that receive federal funds must curtail their expansion into China for at least a decade. On October 7th last year, the U.S. announced sweeping export control measures to curb the sale of advanced chips and equipment to China. This follows the CHIPS Act, signed into law last August, which barred American citizens and green card holders from working with Chinese chip companies. It is a multi-pronged strategy to dent China's technological ambitions. For the Chinese, this is the continuation of the trade war that began under President Trump. Well, I think the U.S. Chips Act is really very unfortunate because, I mean, U.S. is uh, the champion for free trade and U.S. built up this global system. So it's very unfortunate to see U.S. now become a protectionist and then started this uh, trade war <laughs> with the Trump administration. Now it's the Biden administration with the ship wars. And China did not hold back. They have restricted supply of gallium and germanium to the U.S., the two materials used in high-performance chip manufacturing, and of which China controls up to 90% of world production. Also, China banned the import of micron chips, cutting quarter of micron's revenue that's coming from China. Yet, China launched its own fund to boost its semiconductor industry, nearing $47 billion, and offering massive grants to hunt chip manufacturing experts from Taiwan within its Made in China 2025 initiative. As the chip war is heating up between the US and China, right now there is a single leader in chip manufacturing technology, which is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC. As of 2021, 92% of the world's most advanced chips were made in Taiwan by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And China has repeatedly threatened to invade Taiwan, a move that could cut the U.S. off from the majority of advanced chips. And it is a company that makes customized chips for a lot of global tech companies, including uh, Apple and NVIDIA and MediaTek. So when TSMC has a shortage, entire industries shut down. And this dependency on Taiwan worries Western countries. So TSMC was founded in 1987, and it has spent more than 30 years in developing and creating its own manufacturing technology. It is just not very likely that you can create a comprehensive semiconductor ecosystem overnight. Taiwan produces more than half of the world's semiconductors. The impressive development is largely due to a single person, Morris Chang. Chang was born in China in 1931 and is venerated as a national hero in Taiwan. In 2018, he was awarded the country's highest civilian honor by Taiwan's president, Tsai Ing-wen. He studied at the best American universities before founding the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. The chip foundry was the first global manufacturer of microprocessors. Throughout Silicon Valley, he's admired to this day. Morris, the world is full of successful people, frankly, but we've never seen impact like what you've made. And um, on behalf of all of us, you're my hero. Morris Chang, I think, rightly can claim to have really reshaped the chip industry starting in the late 1980s when he founded TSMC. In technology, manufacturing technology, China is at least, at least five or six years behind Taiwan. But how do we measure a country being several years behind in this technology? It's actually measured by the manufacturing process dimension, which is currently in nanometers. Nanometer refers to the length of a transistor. Tiny switches, 10,000 times thinner than a human hair, that control electric currents. One nanometer is equal to one billionth of a meter. The smaller the transistor, the more that can be crammed together. 
The more transistors you have, the better the chip, and the more powerful your computer will be. Each chip is packed with as many as 50 billion transistors. The different size chips are found in different types of electronics. Intel makes a lot of 10 and 14 nanometer server chips that function as the brains of computers, CPUs, and powerful chips used in data centers, GPUs. Less advanced 28 to 40 nanometer chips are used most in the auto industry in components like anti-lock brakes and airbags. Bigger chips are also used in household devices like coffee makers or electric toothbrushes. Five nanometer chips, the most advanced chips currently made, are highly sought after for data handling and artificial intelligence processing, used in leading edge technologies like the latest iPhones, NASA rovers, and F-35 fighter jets. An example of a five nanometer chip is Apple's M2 Ultra chip that was launched in June 23 for Mac Studio and Mac Pro. It has 134 billion transistors. However, the latest manufacturing technology now is three nanometers, and Apple's A17 Pro chip is the first chip to be fabricated using this technology on September 23 for iPhone 15 Pro. It has 19 billion transistors. Both chips were fabricated in TSMC. So to understand how China lags Taiwan in 2020, China was known to be struggling to manufacture chips below 40 nanometers. However, with the recent breakthrough of Huawei Mate 60 phone in 22, SMIC, the leading Chinese chip manufacturing company, was able to fabricate a chip at 7 nanometers, but with some considerable difficulty. TSMC was at this technology process five years ago and with ease. What Huawei actually did trouble the West as an indicator of how aggressive China is building its semiconductor chip capacity, calling for more restrictions from the US side. In the next episode, we will cover how Huawei managed to achieve this breakthrough and how the US responded putting further curbs on ASML, the Dutch company who is the only leader producer of advanced lithography machines used to print transistors on silicon, as well as the huge challenges facing the US in its very ambitious dream to replicate Taiwan's semiconductor ecosystem. So stay tuned and subscribe. This is Tech Analytics Hub.